secret. Up there. Up there? I'm not going up there in the dark. <gasps> Scaredy cat. Up. It's dry and cosy. Promise. Come on. Oh, Ned, don't go. Hey, don't leave us. Come on. Don't play games, Ned. summer, which some will never see end. Adam Salton, it must be. You're the image of your father. You're not unlike him yourself, come to that. <laughs> Good to meet you, Uncle Dan. Oh, forgive me, great Uncle Daniel. Uncle Dan will do nicely. Welcome to England, my boy. The real England. Manchester is the real England. No, no more than London or Southampton was, you'll find. I'll show you England. My break is in the yard. Luggage all in hand, sir. Thank you, Frank. This is my man Davenport, Uncle. Frank, Dr. Sultan. Sir? Right then. Have with us to Pendersdale. Pendersdale is part of the old Anglo-Saxon kingdom of Mercia, Frank. Oh, yeah? Who's Pender when he's home? Uh, Our last pagan king. My father used to say Dale folk are still Saxon warriors at heart. The town, Pendersbourne, there, is guarded by four hills. You see? Lesser hill to the east, you can just glimpse my house. Here to the north, Druids Grove, part of Lady March's estate. They have a circle of stones there. Megaliths. Your father taught you well. Southwards, Mercy Hill, where there was a medieval priory, Mercy Farm now. And to the west there, Pender's Edge, highest point in 30 miles, part of Lord Caswell's estate. The Caswells claimed descent from Pender. That ruined tower below the summit is where he and the Romans and Normans had a fortress, Castra Regis. It's like an old manuscript, Frank. This landscape? Yeah. Oh, by the by, we're invited up to Caswell Manor for a ball tonight. If you have the strength. Though we can as soon dine at home. A baronial ball, Frank. On our first night. His lordship must be pretty old now. Dead, alas. His son, Edgar, inherited about the time you embarked for England. He's as much a stranger as you. Twenty years he's been abroad. I find that hard to understand. That's my old heart good to hear you say it, Adam. Let's bring you home. Yes. You're safe, folks. None of us is safe, though. No. Well, that's a fact. Who asked you, Jackson? Yes. Ned, no! Oh, no. uh, uh, nothing wrong, Mr. Watman? Yes, Doctor. Mary here. I'm a stockman. Ned Rollins went missing last oh, night. Sure. We found Mary wandering on the estate. No sign of Ned. No sign. Have the police and Lord Caswell been informed? Not yet. I'm loath to spoil his lordship's homecoming. Well, that would never do. Can't be helped, Mr. Watford. <laughs> Ned, no. Don't go, Ned. No. Quietly, Lee, quietly now. Poor girl is in shock. Bring her up on the brake. I'll right. take her back to Pendleton. Come on, this way. Well, come on. Gently okay. with her. Yep. Gently. Make room there, Frank. Up you come, my love. Ned. 
We'll carry on searching for young Ned. You'll not find him, master. The white worm takes all and gives none. Enough of that. Are you all children or what? There's a sick girl here. Do as Mr. Watford says. Up there. Apologies for neglecting you, Adam. You've taken some refreshment? Yes, indeed. And your housekeeper showed me the garden where Dad used to play. I feel at home already. You look as if you need a glass of something yourself, Uncle. Allow me. How's the girl? Safe at home with a sleeping draft. Whatever happened to her and Ned last night, and she has no memory of it, whatever it was has thrown her into a kind of catalepsy. Ah, thank you. Whatever it was, has happened before, I gather. I don't know. Devil take it, I wanted you to see the Dale at its best. I'm an old man. You're my only living relative. I want you to feel you... you belong. That was my father's dying wish, Uncle Dan. And I'm not about to disappoint him, or you. I'll tell you straight, then. This is the sixth lad that's disappeared this year. Two of patients of mine. A police detective came over from Chesterfield, but made nothing of it. Lad skipping off to avoid wedlock, he said. They were all walking up with local lasses, you see. What's this about a white worm? Local legend. It said a dragon, a serpent, lived in the Dale once. And... Oh, the Caswell Crest is a sort of a serpent, right? Just so. Now, this serpent lived in caves and well holes. Villagers were afraid to draw water. So, King Penda, he slew the creature. But then, the white ghost of the worm returned to haunt the dale, devouring his young warriors. (laughs) Nonsense, of course. Ned Rollins is no warrior, but folk are beginning to believe it. Some places make it easy to believe such things. I trained as an engineer, as you know. But when I made trips into the outback, there were knights. Well, when you felt there might be something beyond trigonometry. But this is 1870, for heaven's sake. I like to think I'm a man of science. I prefer to seek a rational explanation before I fall back on myth and magic. My hope is that the new Lord Caswell will be a moderating influence. This ball tonight is a good sign. We haven't had a ball at Caswell Manor these 15 years. Ah, good evening to you, Mr... Dr. Daniel Salt. Ah, yes. Of course. Delighted to be here, Lord Castle. In the Arabella, allow me to present my great-nephew, Mr. Adam Salton, from Australia. <laughs> Australia? My lord, my lady, you are acquainted with my country, Lord Castle. I? <laughs> I can find my travels to the more cultivated corners of the end. Welcome to Castor Regis, gentlemen. Thank you, my lady. My lady. Mind his lordship's manner, Adam. Forgive him for the sake of his beautiful wife. Lady Arabella isn't his wife, though she might like to be. Widowed within a twelvemonth. The fellow dropped dead in his garden last summer. She's not his lordship, you know. Hostess for the night. I ordered a precedence of the day, I imagine. She'd grace any occasion. Can't wait to dance with her. <laughs> You're your father's son when it comes to the fair sex, I see. <laughs> Lady Arabella will have her dance card full by now. But never you fret. The county seems to have brought its daughters to meet our eligible new lord. You must be all the A title and an estate do wonders for a man's complexion, Adam. He's invited a sprinkling of tenant farmers, though. That's pleasing. Now there's Mr. Watford. Who's that with him? My word! My word indeed. Who is she? Lilla, his granddaughter. I scarcely knew her with her hair up. Evening to you, Watford. Oh, hey. Miss Watford? My great nephew, Adam. Sir? Mom, sir, I wonder, Miss Lilla, would you care to dance? Oh, yes, indeed. I love to dance. Then I'm your man. This way. <laughs> Don't waste no time, do we? How long is he staying in the Dale? Forever, if I had my way. 
he has property and business. Down on her, as they say. No news of the missing man? No. Little Mary's car, I hear. Yes. We may get some sense out of her tomorrow. Take care of his own. Looked after Lilla after her parents died. Drowned they were on the way to the Indies. Is that right? You'd never guess. She sort of glows somehow. I'd hate to see her. I mean, Lord C enjoys humiliating him. Stop her ladyship becoming his bride to please her bankers. But then most of the girls there tonight would take him on any terms. I hope not. If so, I pity them. I pity his tenants and workers. That surveyor chap sets his mind to breaking up the estate. Does his lordship have experience in business matters? Who knows? He got sent down from Oxford and then packed off to Cape Town for some other misdemeanor. I hope that might have been the making of him. Tonight's showing. He's not the medicine our Dale needs. Then you will have to make shift to cure yourselves. Like Mr. Watford. In fact, I have a mind to give him a hand. Solving the mystery of these disappearances. Have you got a map of the day? No, Adam, we can't have you putting yourself in danger. Uncle, you're looking at a bloke who's fought up a crocodile and come through a bushfire. Good Lord. Spare us a couple of horses. Frank and I will ride over and consult with Mr. Watford first thing tomorrow. Yes, and Miss Watford too, I suppose. See your map. Yes. Now, the girl Mary was found here yesterday morning. In my day, courting couples went up to the wood below Pender's Edge here. Nobody cares to know. There's talk of the white world. What time of day did the other lads go missing? Around dusk. Can you mark where on the map? Uh, let me think now. Um, now, one there. Um, one over here, two across here, another there. So, if we draw lines between those points, where do they intersect? One, two, three, four. Ah, here, roughly, between the southern end of the edge and the ruined tower, but somewhat below. That's helpful. I'll have two men keep watch every night. Four hours on, four hours off. Frank and I will make a pair, won't we, Frank? If you say so, sir. 
What is it? What do you all want? We've come to see how your Mary is. Ah, and what became of Ned. She's still too poorly to talk. I'm waiting for Doctor now. And all your fussing won't help. High time somebody made a fuss. Ah, right. Go and make it somewhere else Jake, then. Don't take on, Mrs. Here. I've brought her some of my granny's herbal remedy. And Mrs. Tompkins' tonic. Well, that's kindly meant. Uh, and I'm grateful. All the same. It's time our so-called betters faced up to their responsibilities. Right. If the Dale is cursed with the worm, the blame lies with them. Right. Remember the old saying, when evil lords do rule our Dale, then thrive the serpent tooth and tail. Right. Right. What is all this? Oh, Jackson, I might have guessed. Mary knows what happened to my mate Ned. I demand to be told. Yes. Let me through! of a sick girl. You'll know what we know as soon as I do. There's no use in my trying. I can't remember, Doctor. Mary, no hurry, Mary. Take your time. Is she eating? Pretty well. The neighbour's been very kind. And Lady Arabella sent broth and cordial and the vicar's wife some of her abrogation. I've made up a sedative here. Two teaspoons every four hours with a little water. Now, my dear, you and young Ned were courting and you arranged a meeting. When? At seven, by Pendersbourne Cross. In which direction did you walk? The footpath by Mercy Farm. Mr. Watford's place? Did you follow it down to the river or up towards the edge? Up. Up. How far? Up through the trees towards the... But I wouldn't go. I knew it wasn't safe. I told him. I was frightened. And it's there. I saw it. A white... A white shape waving and wailing in the dark. The poor child can't go on. I, I can't breathe. Right. Help me. Oh, God help her. I'm afraid only he can now. The child is dead. The ancient curse has come upon us. The curse of the white worm. for a post-mortem. But if she was murdered, the lads were murdered, no question. Some old white worm. No. And Mary claimed she saw something up on the edge. I've been at my old books. A species of worm lie dormant many years. and then they... Many years, Uncle. Not centuries. I don't know. But if a patient believes in a thing strongly enough, it exists for them. Fear or panic can cause cardiac arrest. I find it easier to accept that someone is creating fear and panic for their own ends. It will look like a simple pain. The noble lord was mad enough this morning for one. Given that, is it wise to keep watch on his estate tonight? We'll take shotguns. Never fear. You shall take my old service revolver. Dear old lord, what have you done? Mr. Sultan and Mr. Devonport. Come up closer. Why? Didn't hear no horses down below. My uncle drove us to Pendersbourne Cross. Surprised to see you on watch. Thought you believed in this worm. Hey, I'm not afeard to own, I'm afeard. Where's your master? Thought you saw a light south of the tower there. He went up to check. Why didn't you go with him? Because he told me to stay here and look out for you. He's armed. <laughs> Where do you shoot a white worm? Between the eyes or in the neck. Oh, get down! One of his lordship's boys he came from up there on the left. That'll be old master. Come on out and show yourself. I know you're there. 
I'm Mr. Watford. Wherever you are, come on out. Now. What's that? Let's find out. You know the way up, Jackson. We'll follow. Right. Stay close. Mr. Watford? Master? Are you there? There's a shotgun by that bush. I'll get it. Mr. Watford! Quite a moment. Here is in there. I could be. But there's a path over here to the right. The entrance is up these steps. There's never been a door here, not for years. inside Pender's Tower. Mr. Watford! Mr. Watford! There we go again. It's coming from in there. Right. Stick one of your cartridges in the keyhole. This is trespassing, but this is damage to estate property, sir. I am my life near most like. Put that pistol away, sir. A man's life is in the balance. I take full responsibility. Legal and pecuniary. Stand back. Hold the lantern up. Mr. Watford! Buster! Look under that tarpaulin, Frank. Can we get up the tower? Nay. Hey, top story fell down before I was born. Here. Is there a cellar or dungeon or something? No, his late lordship had it blocked off after a lad fella broke his neck. The floor's rock solid. This is impossible. We heard someone in here. Or something. That was no human sound. That would you like us to think. Oh. We're wasting time. It'll be daybreak in a couple of hours. Jackson, cut along to my uncle. Explain the situation. Right. Tell him I accept my ability. Then ask him to go to Lord Caswell to help mount a full-scale search of the edge. Oh, All right. If I were in your shoes, young master, I'd wake that Mr. O'Lagan rather than his lordship. He's got a point. Well, go on, then. Go! Master. What the hell was that we heard? You tell me. Let's get back to where that shot was fired and look around there. Come on. Lilla's expecting to see her grandfather this morning. started here and went north. Let's try south. Give me the lantern, Frank. Watch how you go. It's slippery. Damn! Closer with that light. Come on, I'm coming. Keep it quiet, can't you? See that? Gap in the rocks. The cave, Frank. The cave. Could be where that weird sound came from. There's the blocked off doorway Jackson spoke of. And there's a well in the middle. The candles round it make it look like a shrine. But nobody here. Unless. I can't see anything down here. I shouldn't think so. It must be a 40 foot drop. Oh, smells terrible. What's that bloody noise? Water and air, trapped in the outlet to the well. I hope you're right. Somebody lit these candles. Who? They could have been lit hours ago. Well, that one's hardly burnt at all. Whoever lit that isn't long gone. Yeah, but we 
just seen them leave. And Mr. Watford? Yes. Yes. There must be another way out somewhere. What's that? What? Oh. Knife. Any little blood? There's blood on it, boss. Still wet. Mr. Watford! Mr. Watford! He won't answer, boss, even if he is here. You can't say that. Can't I? Count the candles. What? One, two, three. Seven candles. Seven people missing. And a bloody awful smell down that well. You're going to have to climb down and take a look, Frank. What? We are! How? With. All right. We'll go back and get the gear to do it. Come on. Well, why, you and me? We need a gang of blokes down here to search the whole place. No. No. That'll scare off whoever it is sneaking down here. And what blokes? Who else can I trust? Apart from Uncle Dan and Lilla. Girl, believe me. I came solely to inform you of the old fella's mishap. Very well, then. You have, and you can go. Now, give me your little hand. Don't distress yourself. I know that... My lord! Have the goodness to allow us to a private word with Miss Watford. I'm damned if I will. My bill for damages to me tower will be with you shortly. Please, we are all here, I trust, in consideration for Miss Watford. Grandfather did go missing last night, but we are in hopes to find him soon. He was hurt to fire a shotgun, I understand, Dr. Sultan. At what? We don't know. I must go and help with the search. Everything that can be done is being done, I assure you. He suffered a fall, perhaps. It's a minor injury. Very well, Adam. I accept your assurance. We thought to break this to you gently. But his lordship intervened. Now see here, you young shaver. I don't care. Please do sit down, my dear. Yes, do. Here. No. Here. Thank you. I, I prefer to stand. And if you don't mind, I should rather like to be alone for a while. Is that wise? I recommend that you come back to my house. Yes. You <laughs> no reflection on the good doctor's abode, I'm sure. But you'd be a sight more comfortable up at the manor. My housekeeper is... Please! You gentlemen seem to be under the impression I am some kind of delicate flower that wilts at the first frost. Watfords have worked mercy for 300 years, and I was brought up to help in the management of it. Whether the grandfather be here or no, send me word how the search goes, and pray for him if you would. Sam, see these gentlemen off the premises. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Jackson's still searching, wouldn't stop. And more of that bloke than I thought. This black pudding is scrummy, Doctor. If you've quite finished eating, Frank, we'll review our investigation. What? Watford fired at someone or something. Mary talked to see the white sheep. Two. Watford dropped his gun and was attacked. We heard a cry of pain. Three. He made his way or was dragged to the cave. The seven candles link his fate to the six lads. He may have been killed for attempting to solve the mystery. Like you and Frank. Too late to worry about that. Somewhere there is another passage from the cave, enabling the murderer or murderers to come and go. The cold, calculating brutality you describe baffles me. I sense some deep pathology at work. I find it easier to believe in the worm than accept my neighbours could be murderous fiends. Yeah? A letter from Dr. Clough, sir. Oh. Ah. Here we are. Thank you, Mrs. Sanders. Don't go, Frank. The autopsy report on Mary. Lord in heaven. It's as you suspected. She was poisoned. Digitalis. Enough to kill two grown men. But who? Who had the opportunity, Uncle? Who? That's for the coroner and police to consider. But the prime suspect must be I myself, who left two prescriptions. The vicar sent liniment... Arabella, cordial, most of the neighbors food of some kind, including Jackson. Ah, 
master. Mr. Watford. Oh. Master. See what we shall see. The water's eddying in from a sort of culvert. Look. Behind all that flotsam and sludge. Fix the light this way. It's not flotsam. It's a body. What's left of one, its clothes are caught up on the stonework. There's another. Floating round there. And another shining over. Lord Almighty. It's Jackson. Jackson? Hold steady. Here's the other one now, but that's him. What the hell's teeth? He came looking for young Ned. Jackson came looking for him. And now here we are looking for. What? What's that? What's that, my darling? 
a knife? I don't know. to madness than we care to acknowledge. Her husband's sudden death may be the root of it. Another sudden death? Mm -hmm. Wasn't like Mary's, by any chance? Good Lord. That never occurred to me. It was very like. Are we saying... Are we saying this woman could have committed ten murders? I would say this all. We have a basilisk in the Dale who kills as soon as look. Little Mary almost died of fright before she was poisoned. She saw, and those other poor devils saw, what they thought was an apparition in a white gown chanting at the moon. Oh, we must stop my lady now. Call in the troopers, it's fine. He means the police. This is a hanging matter, Uncle Dan. She is not fit to plead. The police may thank us if, before I summon them, I make arrangements to commit her to an asylum. Can that be done so readily? By no means. We shall need the assent of another doctor at least. Hand me that copy of Debrett, my boy. March, Sir Henry, first baronet, married Lady Clarissa Arabella John, 1868. Only daughter of the Earl and Countess of Leek. I had no idea. Both deceased. Dash it, that's no help. Perhaps Lord Caswell can tell us more. I'm afraid we'll have to apprise him of the facts first thing tomorrow. The principal scene of crime is on and under his land. Our first duty is to apprise Miss Lilla of the facts that relate to her grandfather at least. Don't be thought. Tomorrow, we hope, we'll see an end to this evil that haunts our dear. require help with her burial expenses, I suppose. No, oh, no, Melody, no. It's that Dr. Sultan sent word. Uh, sent word my Mary was poisoned. Poisoned? Nonsense. Well, I hope so. But the coroner is to sit upon it. And that being the case, I, I shall have to tell the truth. And your cordial was the last thing she sucked, ma'am. Out of respect, uh, I, th I thought it my duty to tell you first. I see. You have come to blackmail me, in short. Don't lie and act innocent with me. I never would lie to your ladyship. Never let me let go of me, please. How can I trust you, you wretch? I can't trust you. Stop it, my lady. Oh, don't talk to me of heart. There is no heart in the world like to mine. Oh, you may stand. I can do harm and I'm poor, lonely when you marry me. And best be gone. Joy, your slimmery, spying daughter. Oh, that's 
Doctor. Tell Miss Miller we're here, please, Anne. Oh, she's out for the day, sir. Right. We're all behind her not being here. And nobody's seen hide nor air of Jackson. Where can we find Miss Lilla? Oh, Druid's Grove. Her ladyship thought a change might do her good. Lady Arabella? Something amiss? Easy does it, Mr. Redden. Nothing amiss, Sam. We'll call another time. Up now. Hey! We'll sit here, Lila. My maid will bring us out some refreshment. You have a lovely garden, my lady. I strive to keep it so. My husband left me less well provided than I anticipated, and I am presently in want of a suitable there is great hope in the Dale that you will be the next Lady Caswell. Oh. His lordship has not even condescended to take tea here yet. His fancy dotes on April and May, not high summer, as you will have noticed. <laughs> Let me assure you, Lady Arabella, I have no regard for Lord Caswell in that way at all. There is no man in the world worthy of such regard, my love. I think I... I believe... I know one or two. You deceive yourself. We women submit to survive and connive at our own corruption. The time is come. Uh, how tiresome we have come for you. Forgive me, my lady, but I... Emma, I did not look to find you here. I'm always pleased to see you, madam. What did you look for, Mr. Salt? I was out for a day's walking, and I recalled your invitation to view the megaliths here. I am not at leisure to show them to you now. Simply point me in the right direction, and I'll bother you no further. Up the rise through those trees, I would ask you not to touch them. I won't. Thank you. I won't there. Since you're here, Lilla, my uncle charged me to deliver this. This note to Mercy Farm. Good day to you both. Trust me, show no alarm, but you are in danger here. Do not drink or eat anything. Do not let her ladyship come too close. I shall remain within call. Matters will be resolved shortly. This is not the time to say it, but I love you, dearest Lilla, with all my heart. Bad news, my dear. You look startled. Uh, not really. Some of it I guessed already. In God's name, Dr. Salton, I, I thought I'd return to a Christian country. By your account, it's a bedlam of pagan murders and mumbo-jumbo. My own man skewered and drowned. Not but what he deserves some chastisement for his damn disloyalty. I share your shock and discomfiture, sir. But time is short. As local magistrate, do you concur with my course of action? Oh, the sooner this mess is swept up, the better. Apropos, that nephew of yours won't escape an action for trespass. Don't think it. If he kept to the letter of your law, you'd be none the wiser about these murders. Silence, Frank. I don't bandy words with minions. I'm late for me morning, Gallop. Uh, one thing more. Can you assist us in finding Lady March's next of kin? Arabella is a baronet's widow who has been a dinner guest here. That's all I know of her. Now, Leek... Her maiden name is Clarissa John, daughter of the late Earl of Leek. What's it? She is Clarissa John. You are familiar with that name? No, 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 no not at all. Why should I be? I'm off. Uh, find a footman to show you that. Why, I cannot guess. Come, the detectives and the asylum superintendent will be waiting on us in Pendersbourne. I really must insist you try my court. I shall go cross if you do not. Just a taste, then, to please you. <laughs> oh, dear. Now I've spilled it. You really are the most provoking child. of your time, if you please. In private, send the girl away. I'll go and 
walk among the trees of the meeting. Yes, do. Oh, this is an unexpected pleasure, my lord. Sit down and take a glass with me. Miss Lilla found it delicious. Huh? Well, uh, well why not? Huh? Do you swarm in the saddle? Oh. Feature a spirited column or two about an evil, demented widow whom a peer of the realm unfortunately killed with his sword stick in self defense. <laughs> Die, you! <laughs> oh, oh, no! I can't believe I'm watching this. We must help him, Adam. Be still, Lilla. It's too horrible. It's horrible. Oh. I at last. Oh. Oh. She's making off towards the druid stones. Her face is radiant. She seems to be in a kind of trance. How can such things be? Was all that they spoke of true? Everything in me cries no, but... The answer I fear is yes. Oh, Adam. Oh, my dearest, kindest girl. This will all be over soon, I promise. Quickly now. We must keep her in view till Uncle Dan arrives. Can't 
hear you, Lila. You'll hear nothing more in this world. But how? And how came she here? Apart from us, there's only one person alive who knows of this place. God have mercy on us all. Hold me, Adam. Kiss me. From here on, stay behind me. If she confronts us, just keep behind me. Here we go. That morning Shrek runs down to the dungeon. You see the candlelight shining on the steps. Oh, aye. You see, there's an alternative way out. Yeah. We don't know where. What's that opening? I didn't see that last night. Why? Kind of stone door in an iron frame. But it must weigh a ton. A cantilever, I'd say, Governor. Pardon? Oh, I have to say. I'll take a peek through. A steady. I can hear somebody. Frank! What? It's Lilla. This is Inspector. Where is she? The Lady Arabella? We were following her. It's weird. Nobody's come out of there since we. before this memorial stone to mourn neighbors and friends lost forever, somewhere beneath Pender's Edge. Loss was turned to gain for me. It brought my great nephew, Adam, and Lilla together. She has found herself a husband, and we have found ourselves a new neighbor and friend. He is determined to sell his holdings in New South Wales and bid for Mercy Farm and other parts of Castor Regis down for auction after his lordship's untimely end. God bless Mr. Adam and his bride. Aye, aye, aye. Success to all Mr. Adam. It is the decision of the coroner that the well beneath the tower yonder should be sealed off out of respect to the dead. The executors of the estate, therefore, yesterday instructed my nephew to prepare dynamite charges. And so, are the fuses ready? They are. Give the word along, Frank. Light the fuses! Light the fuses! Goodbye, Grandfather. As the hardy neat's tongue and maiden hair grow about this stone, so may memories enfold lost loved ones in our hearts. The lair of the white worm. Some terrors lie too deep for dynamite, my love. In The Lair of the White Worm by Bram Stoker, dramatized by Brian Wright, Adam Salton was played by Jimmy Bisley, Dr. Daniel Salton, Peter Marinka. Frank Davenport, Ben Crow, Lord Edgar Caswell, Stephen Critchner. <laughs>